Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss charitable contribution, but this time for C Corporation. Why do I say this time? Because we do have a charitable contribution for individual as well. There are different rules for C Corporation and for individuals. Regardless, the overall, the overall idea is the same. And what's the big idea? The US government, Congress wants you, they want you to contribute money, asset, property, to charities. Why? Because by doing so, you are serving the public goods and the government job is to serve the public good. Therefore, you are in a sense helping the government do what they're supposed to do. So what do they do to encourage you to do so? They give you a tax deduction for the amount of money or the amount of asset you contribute to a qualified charity. Now, what can you contribute? Well, you can contribute cash, you can contribute property, and you can contribute ordinary income property. We're going to have to explain the concept for each type of asset you can contribute. And there are always exceptions, limitations, specific rules, whether you contribute cash, property, or ordinary income property. And this is what we will discuss in this session. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with cash contribution. Simply put, you contribute cash to a charity. Great, you can deduct this cash in the year it was paid. Again, we are dealing here with C Corporation. What happened if you are an accrual basis corporation? Well, if you are an accrual basis corporation, you can make a deduction based on a promise to contribute the cash. However, you have to meet certain conditions. Just to be clarified, when we're talking about corporation, we're not talking about partnership, we're not talking about S corporation. So you can take that deduction in the year you make the promise, as long as the board of directors made a final authorization. It means the corporation itself made a commitment, an official commitment that they're gonna make the contribution, that's one. It's not only that, they cannot make the contribution and wait two, three years to make the payment. The payment is made at the latest, by the corporate tax return due date, which is if, we're, if we're looking at a calendar year taxpayer, April 15th. So if you are in 2024 and you make that, you made that decision to contribute, you know, $15,000 to XYZ charity. Well, that's fine. You can make the decision and you have up until April 15th, assuming you're a calendar year taxpayer, 2025 to make the payment. As, lo as long as you make the payment, by April 15, 2025, you can take the deduction for the year 2024. So those are the rules for cash contribution. How about if you contributed a property? Well, we're talking here specifically long-term capital gains property, like stocks or any property that you held less than a year. And that property is long-term because if you sell it, it's going to generate long-term capital gains, which is, again, long-term capital gains are... Uh, are subject to preferential tax treatment. Simply put, you held this asset that you're contributing for a year or more. That's why it's long term. Well, and you have a gain because the fair market value of the asset that you are contributing is greater than the adjusted basis. This is how we have a gain. If you sell it today, the fair market value is, ha is higher than the adjusted basis, you have a gain and you held it for more than a year. Well, the deduction, generally speaking, under those assets is fair market value. You can deduct the fair market value. However, there are two exceptions we're going to see later where you cannot deduct the fair market value. Now, what happened if you contributed ordinary income? What is ordinary income property? Ordinary income property is any property that's not long-term capital gains property. But what we are looking at here, we're looking at, yeah, for example, if you bought a piece of land or a stock and you contributed before you held it for a year or more, that's ordinary income property. But really, when we say ordinary income property, we're looking at supplies or inventory. The deduction is the lesser of. So the, how much can you deduct? The lesser of fair market value or adjusted basis. 
Again, there's an exception, and we will discuss the exception later. But this is generally speaking the rule for ordinary income, ordinary income property. The best way to illustrate all these concepts and the exceptions is to start with examples, starting with first simple straightforward example on December 15, 2023, Apple Enterprises, a calendar year, accrual basis partnership approves a $10,000 contribution to New York Scientific Society. It's a qualified charity. The contribution is made April 12th. How much can they take? Well, I hope you know, they cannot take anything. Why? Because it's a partnership. Assuming Apple Enterprises is a corporation rather than a partnership and the authorization by the board of directors is made on April 15th, that's fine. Then they can deduct $10,000 in 2023. However, a, corp a partnership cannot take this deduction. Let's take a look at an example when it comes to inventory. Inventory is what? Ordinary income property. Falcon Corporation holds inventory with the basis of 15,000, fair market value of 12. What does that mean? It means this asset, if they sell it today, they incur a loss, a loss of 3,000. The rating the inventory leads a deductible of 12,000. Why? Because this is ordinary income property, the lesser of fair market value or basis, the lesser is fair market value. What can you do? What can Falcon do to maximize this contribution? Here's what they should do. They should sell the asset, sell the inventory, and recognize a loss of 3,000. And this loss is recognizable. It's a loss. Then take the 12,000 that they got from the proceeds and donate, t donate to the charity. As a result, they will get a tax deduction of total of 15,000. 3,000 in losses and 12,000 for the donation otherwise if they did they know donated the asset they would only get twelve thousand so this is where tax planning knowing the rules will make a difference in the decision that you make let's take a look at an example where we contributed long-term property well in the current year farhat corporation gifts a plot of land a capital asset to northampton community college farhat purchased the land five years ago for eighty thousand and the fair market value of the donation is 130. So Farhad purchased the land for 80. Now if Farhad wants to sell it, they can receive 130,000. That's the fair market value. Well, how much can I contribute? Well, long-term property, generally speaking, it's the fair market value unless there are exceptions. So generally speaking, the corporation subject to, you know, percentage limitation is the fair market value. There are $50,000 appreciation, that's fine. I can contribute the fair market value, Farhat Corporation can contribute the fair market value and get a deduction for 130,000. Now, bear in mind, we're gonna look at a few examples. Here's a few exceptions, two to be more specific for long-term property. Here's what we're assuming here. We are assuming that Northampton Community College, this is where I went to school, Northampton Community College, where I started my college career, used this land to maybe buy a new, uh, to, to build a new campus or use this land to build a dormitory for the students or build this land for a scientific lab or a computer lab. So they use this land for the purpose of Northampton Community College. They use the land for that. That's fine. However, two exceptions exist when you can when I when you contribute long-term capital gain property where you cannot take the fair market value. In two cases, the, dedu the deduction for donated capital gain is based on the property basis, not the fair market value. The first exception, if the taxpayer donated a tangible personal property and the charity uses it for unrelated purpose, so it's a personal property, not real property, and the charity used it for a purpose that's not for that property, for, for that charity purpose. We'll work an example. Under those circumstances, the deduction is capped at the property basis, whatever that property basis is, you cannot take the fair market value. If you go back to the community college example, let's assume I contributed something other than land, some sort of a personal property. I purchased it for 80,000 and now it has a value of 130, but the community college cannot use it. It's not related to the community college. Well, if that's the case, then I cannot take the 130, I can take the 80,000. We'll work another example to illustrate this point. That's the first exception. Also, the donation of capital gain property to specific private foundation. 
if you are contributing to a specific private foundation, remember, the idea of giving you a deduction is it's for the public good. That's why the government is giving you this deduction. If it's for a private foundation, usually there's, you know, names of important people for those foundations, the deduction restricted also to the basis. If it's a private foundation, you're not really helping the public good because the private foundation, they do public good, but for their own, under their own name. So they are benefiting, therefore you should not get a deduction. If you believe in them, that's fine. You can give them the property, but you don't get the fair market value. Let's take a look at an example where the gifted is to a related or unrelated pur purpose. In the current year, Blue Corporation gifts a painting valued at 250,000 to Eastern Region Art Gallery, a qualified charity. The painting is displayed. So guess what? We gave them the painting and they're using the painting, they're, they're an art gallery for display. Well, Blue Corporation purchased the painting in the year 2000 for $100,000. And we're going to assume the year 2000 is a longer than a year ago, right? As for the gallery uses the painting for related purpose, Blue is permitted to deduct the full 250000 No problem whatsoever. It's used for its related purpose. Assume... Blue contributed this property to the American Cancer Society. Well, really, there's no use for this painting for the American Cancer Society. We're going to make the case that they really don't, don't have a place. I mean, they can place it in their headquarters, but that's not the case here. Okay, so we're going to be assuming they're going to sell it. Under those circumstances, the donation is limited to the 100000 because it's a personal property for unrelated use. Therefore, they cannot take the two fifty. They can take the 100000 So those are the two exceptions. Also, we talked about ordinary income property. There's also an exception for that. Exception for the ordinary income property exists when the property is giving to a charity focusing on the caring of the ill, needy, or infant. So if you give an ordinary income property to a charity that takes care of infant, needy people, ill people, that's fine. You don't have to take the lower of the basis of fair market value. There are rules. or the tangible personal re or tangible personal research property built by the corporation is donated to a certified educational or scientific organization for the purpose of research, experimentation, or research training. Or if you build this asset, build, you means the corporation, and you're don donating it for a an educational institution or scientific organization for the purpose of research, then you don't have to take the lower. The deductible amount now is the lesser of. The property basis plus 50% of its appreciation. So rather than the basis, they allow you 50% of additional appreciation. That's fine. Or, bear in mind, not or, or double the property basis. You cannot exceed the, the property basis. So this is basically the limit. So if you take the property basis plus 50%, if it's going to be more than twice the basis, you can take twice the basis. The best way to illustrate this, always with an example. Eagle Corporation, a garment merchant, gifts children attire to the Red Cross for dressing unprivileged kids. Here we have an exception. The basis in the clothing that they gave is 2500 The fair market value is 3500 Generally speaking, if this is inventory or ordinary asset, you will take the lower, which is 2500 But Eagle's deduction is not 2500 They're going to be able to take 3000 Why? It's the basis plus 50%. 50% of the appreciation. The appreciation is 1,000. Remember 2,500, the, the basis, the fair market value is 3,500. So those, they are 1,000 above the basis. Guess what? They will, they can get 50% of the appreciation. 50% is 500. So the basis plus 500 is 3,000. They can contribute at three, they can deduct $3,000. Let's assume the fair value of these closing was 8,000. Well, if that's the case, if that's the case, you are limited to twice the basis. You are limited to twice the basis. Why? Because if you take now, let's go back to the to the to the to the original example. If we, if we're if we're going with eight thousand, eight thousand as the fair market value minus two thousand five hundred. Let's see how much is the appreciation minus two thousand five hundred. That's five thousand five hundred of appreciation. If we take fifty percent of that. If we take 50% of that, that's 2,750. Now, we're going to take 2,500 plus 2,750 plus 2,000. That's going to give us 5,250, assuming we went to the with, the with the basis plus 50% of the appreciation. Well, that's the general rule. However, you cannot exceed 
twice your basis. Twice your basis is 2,000 times 2. Therefore, you are allowed only 5,000. So you are not allowed to use basis. You are, you, first, you'll, you'll try. My basis plus 50% of depreciation. As long as it's not twice the basis, I can take it. If it exceeds the basis, uh, twice the basis, you are limited to twice the basis. Now let's talk about the limitation on charitable contribution because always, as always, Congress is generous, the US government is generous up to a point. Just like with individual, they limit you. Corporations have limits on the deductions for charitable contribution. What's the general limitation? Corporation taxpayer can deduct contribution up to 10% of their taxable income or 15% for food donation, which is we don't have to worry about this, in a given tax year. How do we compute taxable income? It's very important to compute taxable income. When we compute taxable income, we exclude the charitable contribution deduction. So we cannot count that, duh, but I have to tell you this. You cannot count net operating loss carry back or capital loss carry back, which is... You, can, you can't count those in your operation. You cannot count something called the dividend received deduction, which is the deduction given by the government. So when you're computing taxable income, you have to factor out. You have to take out those deductions. You have to take out those deductions. So if the corporation contribution exceeds the 10% limit, let's assume you contributed and you took more than 10%. That's fine. For GAAP, you can do whatever you want to. The excess can be carried forward for up to five subsequent years. And always I say gap allows you because eventually we're gonna have to reconcile gap to the IRS. I'm always planting the seed for you. Now these carried forward contribution that are unused are combined with contribution made in those years, then they are subject to 10%. So you'll add them to those contribution. However, deductions for the current year contribution are prioritized. So when you make a deduction in future years, first you'll take the charitable contribution that you made in that particular year. Once they are used up, you can kind of go into the old one, the unused from the prior year. So any remaining amount from the previous years is deducted also in a chronological order, the older one first. The best way to illustrate all of this is to do what? Work an example. During 20X3, NOAA Corporation incurred the following income and expenses. Income from operation 150, expenses from operation 120. They had the dividend received deduction included here of 20,000 and they made $7,000 in charitable contribution. This is 20X3. So let's compute how much they can contribute, how much they can deduct of the 7,000. Is it all of it, some of it, none of it, what's going on? So let's compute our taxable income. It's 150 minus 120 plus 20. So it's income minus expenses. Then we have to add back the dividend received deduction that was included here. So simply put, as far as charitable contribution, our taxable income is 50,000. We're going to multiply this by 10%, which will give us an allowed deduction of 5,000. We deducted 7,000. So 7,000 of, of that amount, only 5,000 is allowed, which will give us 2,000 of unused amount. And this unused amount is carried forward to 20x4, 20x5, 20x6, 20x7, and 20x8. Let's move forward. Let's go to 20x4. NOAA Corporation reported taxable income of 55,000 in 20X4 for the purpose of calculating charitable contribution. Also, NOAA contributed 4,000 in 20X4. Well, for the purpose of 20X4, NOAA can, can, can contribute a maximum amount of 5,500. How much did NOAA contributed in 20X4? Only 4,000. Okay, so the contribution of the current year is used first, so we can, we can deduct up to 5,500, however, we're going to deduct 4,000 first, and the remaining 1,500 of the unused portion from 20x3 is utilized to deduct a total of 5,500. So because we are allowed, we're now we're going to start to use up what we did not, what we had unused in 20x3. So we are allowed 5,500 first is the contribution made in x4, left is 1,500. We're going to use the contrib unused contribution in 20x3. And now we have in 20x3 a remaining of $500. Now, charitable contribution, whether you are dealing with individual or corporation, it's very important that you understand very well, especially on the CPA exam. They'll try to confuse you because two sets of rules, one for individual, one for corporation. You want to make sure you keep those separated this is important for the enrolled agent exam. Of course, if you're an accounting student, what should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, true, false resources. That's going to help you understand this concept better. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard and stay safe.